G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Now you've reached the next part of my Dynamo series for Python, or Python series for Dynamo. Um, so in this case, we're looking at the API again, just to do some reinforcement and look at a slightly more abstract example um, where we're setting some properties and looking at an enumerator as well. So we've looked at fundamentals previously and touched on a couple of other API examples. And then after this, we'll be looking at some more advanced examples. So Dynamo and Python to set sun settings for views. So quite a common thing that we need to do in things like feasibility projects where we're looking at a time range and we want to create a view for every single shadow of a certain time range. Um, so in this case, we're going to be navigating the Revit API docs again, but looking at a slightly more abstract mixture of classes. Um, we're going to be looking at just how to unwrap some elements again, um, reiterating some basics. We're going to be looking at something called an enumeration, which is slightly different to a property or a method. Um, and then we're also just going to be actually building the Python script as well. Um, so let's just jump into the example. So in this case, we want to update sun settings in views. So in this case, we're actually going to be inspecting a slightly more abstract class, um, which has some, a few more inheriting classes related to it, um, which in this case is the sun and shadow type class. And we'll also be looking at the view class a little bit as well. Um, so we're just going to jump straight onto the API docs and have a look at this. So we're going to be looking at the sun and shadow settings class here. And then within the class, we're going to be looking for a few specific things. So we need to set the date time of the view um, or its shadow settings date time, essentially. So there's, a, I think it's a method, uh, actually, I think it's a property called um, start time and date. So this is one of the most important things we're setting, which is essentially just setting a date time for the view. So in this case, it's going to take a date time from Dynamo. Um, but this is a property of the sun and shadow settings of the view. Um, so it's important to note that we need to work in this particular way when we set up this, this method and property. Um, we're also going to be looking at a few other things, such as the ground plane. So we're going to be looking at what the ground plane is, so which level it is. So we're going to need to be dealing with getting the ID of a level in this case. Um, as well as that, we also need to check if it has a ground plane as well, because sometimes you want to do the unlimited shadows. Um, so in this case, I think this is a, a method. I'm trying to recall. There's one where it's like um, user's ground plane, I think it's called. Uh, yeah, there we go. The user's ground plane method, which just is a Boolean essentially saying it's either true or it's false. So we're going to set up the script to work in a way such that the user can either specify the level in the custom node that this eventually gets used in, or they can just say no level and the default is null. And then we pick up whether the null is there. And if it's null, then we say no ground plane. And if it isn't null, then we take that level and try to make it the ground plane for the view. Um, as well as that, we're also going to be looking at the shadow intensity, um, which isn't actually a, a method or property of the sun and shadows class. It's actually a property of the view class. Um, so sometimes properties aren't always where you'd expect them to be. Um, in this case, we're expecting an integer between 0 and 100, which will set the darkness of the shadows in the graphic display options. Um, as well as that, we're just going to be looking at the views, um, sun and shadow settings as well as a property. So this is where we actually apply our methods. We apply it to the sun and shadow settings of the view. Um, so we're essentially going to be chaining um, our methods together by assigning our shadow setting properties of the view um, to a variable and then applying methods to that variable instead. So we're going to be method chaining in this case. Um, but that's essentially all we need to do this script. Um, another thing that I found I did need is I wanted to convert date times to a local format. So in this case, I found that there was an option in the .NET framework that Dynamo has written in, um, actually just released by Windows which can deal with the kind of date time you're dealing with. And typically you want to deal with the local date time. Um, so you can actually just apply a function where you specify the date time kind um, to the value. And then you need to obtain a date time kind as what's called an enumerator or an enumeration. Um, in this case, this means you're dealing with a, a fixed list of words that it accepts. So in this case, we're going to be looking at local. So the time represented in local time. But you can see you can also convert it to say UTC or um, coordinated universal time. So, or unspecified time format. But in this case, we're going to be looking at local. Um, as well as that, under sun and shadow settings, and we'll get started after this. 
um, we, there's another enumeration that we're dealing with, which is the sun and shadow type. So in this case, this deals with whether we're dealing with say like a still image study, a one day study, a multi-day study. In this case, we're gonna be dealing with a still image study. So we are also gonna to have to apply this as a, a method upon the sun and shadow type, upon the, the shadow settings as well. Um, so this is an, a, basically just an enum as it's called for short, um, where you can pick a delimited list of options from that list. And typically the API docs will say what those options are. So let's just jump straight in. So I'm in Revit here. I've set up a range of views between nine and three. I've also named them 9 a.m. through to 3 p.m. Um, currently, I think all their date times are just set to a lighting study with 135, 35 degrees. So obviously not what we want. In this case, we're gonna be jumping in Dynamo and using Python to set them properly. So I'll just expand Dynamo. So at the moment I've got a get view by name node from Genius Loci package, which gets the names from the model. Uh, I've also got a date time which is being built and I've applied a range from nine through to 15, which is nine through to three o'clock in 24 hour time. And you can see that I get seven date times as a result. Um, the same as my seven views that I'm applying them to. I've also got an integer slider for my shadow intensity. And I've also got my levels, um, but I also have an is null check. So the way that the custom node will work once it's built is it will say that by default, the level field will be null. And then if it's told to be something else by the user, then it's a level or whatever it is that it's been told to be. But we're gonna be checking inside the custom node if it's null. So I'm just gonna be building outside the custom node environment, but I'll show you how I've done it after in the actual custom node itself. But let's get started. So we're just gonna make a Python script and we're gonna have five variables here. So we need to go all the way up to in five or in four. Um, we're gonna get our views. We're gonna get our date times, our shadow intensity. We're gonna get our level, which could be sometimes null. In this case, it's just gonna be level. And then a check of whether our level is null. Cause we're gonna be passing this to an if statement to say whether the ground plane is a level or if the ground plane is just disabled. So let's just jump straight into our Python script. So I'm just gonna go down and start building. Um, we could, you know, take away a few things we know we're not gonna use. Usually the UI is not needed. Um, usually, sometimes it is. Um, let's just start with that. So we're gonna begin with uh, calling our document using document manager instance current DB document. Um, but from there, the next thing we need to do in this case is call on our variables. I'm gonna really quickly just build a little function again. So I'm just gonna define a function called to list upon our variable input. And I'm just gonna say that my variable, which I'm gonna call out, is just gonna be that check if we're dealing with a list. So if it is a list, so we'll use is instance and we'll say input is list. Otherwise, input in square brackets to make it a list. And we'll just return out at that point. So we're gonna start declaring our variables. So views is gonna be equal to to list, the function we just made applied to input zero. So this will turn it into a list if it's not a list. We're gonna do the same for times, which is input two, input one. And then our shade is just gonna be an integer. So we don't need to do anything to it. It's just a single variable. And then the level, which is our base level, is gonna be equal to unwrap element and we're going to apply that to in three so that it unwraps the level so it can be used in Revit API. We're also just going to make a variable called no ground plane which is our boolean which detects if our level is set to null. In this case we'll assign that to input four. So what I'm going to do now is just I'm going to use those local date time functions from Windows that I found. So I'm going to make a date time kind first. So you'll remember there's two variables, there's your date time, then there's the date time kind, which is that enumerated local time. So we're gonna call on the system package and we're gonna use date time kind to build a date time kind and we're gonna enumerate this as local. We're gonna use this in an iteration function. So we're gonna build up a list called date time underscore times or DT underscore times as an empty list. And we're gonna say for time, in times, our, our original list of times that we've built. We're only just gonna say spec time, special time is equal to system. And we're gonna call on date time again, and we're gonna call on that specify kind to convert our date time to local. 
I'm going to say time, and we're just going to call this datetime underscore kind. And we're just going to append the result of spec time to our dt underscore times. So in this case, I'll just quickly make this my output and just see what we're getting. Just save, and I'll just run. And I've got a warning already. I must have mistyped something. I think I've put a capital somewhere. So, yep, I missed a capital. And I've also missed. Uh, missed a capital. I missed a couple of capitals there. Jeez. There we go. You can see at the moment we're just passing those local date times out the other end. I think at the moment they should be the same. Yeah, they should be the same because I'm just working off of the same computer. Um, so at the moment, we're just going to be using these date times from here. So we're going to be doing everything within a transaction because we're changing the sun settings of views already in the Revit model. So we're making active changes using the Revit API. So we do need to treat this as a transaction. So we're just going to make a list for the views when they're done. And just call this views done and just make this an empty list. So we're going to iterate. Um, we're going to zip iterate over two variables again. So we're going to say for view and time as our local variables in zip for views and dt underscore times. So we're calling on those date times that we've just built. We're going to say that view unwrapped. So we're going to do underscore uw. And we're going to unwrap the local variable of view. In this case, we're going to assign to the variables a property. So we're going to take that view and assign its sun and shadow setting properties to that variable. And we can keep running here and there just to make sure we haven't made any typos. Looks good. Um, in this case, I'm just going to actually set some properties. So I'm going to call on the property first. So of the view, we're going to change its shadow intensity in this case. And we're going to change this to shade. So if I ran this now, I'd start making active changes to the model. Um, I guess I probably could just to show you what, what it does. So at the moment, it looks like around 50. Maybe I'll make this a bit dimmer. And see that see my shadow intensity is already being changed for all the views. So that's already working. So I can see my iteration is operating as intended. So that's great. So I'll just crank my shadows up. Okay. So from here, we're also going to be looking at the properties of the sun and shadow settings of the view. So the first thing we're going to do is take our sun and shadow settings, and we're going to take our sun and shadow type. So remember, this is our enumerated um, element. So we need to actually set this to sun and shadow type and pick the enumeration option of still image in this case. As well as that, we're going to take the settings and we're going to take the property of start, date, and time. And we're going to set that to time, the local variable in this case. So that's the one that does most of the work, actually changing the time. I think that's almost all we need to do. The last thing we need to do is pick up our ground plan. So this is where we call on our check if we're dealing with a null. So we're saying here, if no ground plan, uh, or if no GP, which is our variable, in this case, we don't have no ground plan, so we we don't want to say there's a ground plan, so or we don't have a ground plan, so we're saying settings, and we're taking the property of user's ground plan equals false, because in this condition, level is null, which is true, and then we have to make an else condition. And we're going to take that same statement, but we're going to say it's true in this case. So it's going to apply the ground plan tick box. And we also want to apply the property of the ground plane level ID from the, the API docs. And in this case, we're going to take our level, which is that unwrapped level from the beginning, and get its ID, because that's what it expects for the function. When we're done, we're just going to append. So we're going to go to views underscore done, append view. And then for our output, um, obviously, we finish our transaction as well, so that's already in my template. Um, transaction manager instance transaction task done. Um, and at the end, we could send out any number of variables, but in this case, let's just make a list 
and send out views done and our date times. So I think at this point, um, this script should work hopefully. So what I might do is just make Rabbit a little bit bigger so I can see what's going on. And I will just open back my Python up and we should hopefully see everything change. So it's very subtle, um, but I think it worked. So I think if you look at this view for 12 p.m., there you go, you can see it's 12 p.m., it's applied level one as the ground plane. Let's just look at 10 as well. We've got, there we go, 10 a.m., let's go to 2 p.m. Cool, 2 p.m., level one, great. So now let's just um, try and apply no level. So in this case, what it would look like in the custom node is this would be our level as null and we will be checking if this is null and I'll just run that and we should receive an unlimited depth now so you can see our ground planes just been turned off it's been turned off so you can see it's 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 worked which is great so you can obviously toggle that in the custom node itself um, in the inputs uh, default value but again I'll just quickly change this back and run. In this case, I think this should should have worked. Yeah, it's back to level one. You can see we're getting a few graphic graphic bugs by the looks of it. Seems like it needs to refresh on the view. See the shadows aren't refreshing until I resume my view extents. Um, so we are seeing a little bit of a graphical bug, but it's working. Cool. So there we go. So um. Essentially, that's that's worked um, for all of our views. So you can see just how easy how easy that is to, to set up. Cool. I'll quickly show you my my custom node as well um, that I've built. So if I just jump into back into Dynamo and in my custom package, I've got a node called Sun Settings, which I think I keep under Views. So in Crumple, Revit views and view set sun settings. You can see here I've got just ground plane for my level, but inside the node, I've got that extra input and I've got an is null connected to it. And by default, I'm asking for a level, but if I don't get a level, my default is null. So you can see that's how I deal with that um, no ground plane condition by using the default value. Um, but otherwise that's pretty much it. And then at the end, I just take my two lists or my two elements in my list and I get them at index and I split them up into views and date times for my outputs. So that's essentially it in a custom custom node format. Um, so nice and easy. Um, so I'll see if I just do a little test with this and just connect it up. I can connect my views, date times, intensity, and my level. Run and it should work. And then I can obviously just take my level away. And in this case, you can see that it's picked up that, that lack of level per se, which should have. Yeah, so you can see it's picked that up. Um, so that's pretty much it. So that's the workflow. Um, so quite a handy little workflow, uh, but also a good way to learn a bit more about properties and the API. So I'll probably do one more API video. I haven't quite decided what one to do yet. Probably something that creates Revit elements a bit more because so far I've been looking more at modifying elements or creating views and sheets. So I might look at something like um, taking a bunch of rooms and generating areas and area boundaries in this, at the same level in a different view. That might be a good way to sort of explore the API creation methods a bit more. Um, and then after that, we'll be looking at some more advanced techniques like filtered element collecting. Um, yeah, there we go. So um, thanks for watching. And I guess um, anything you need for learning Python, there's probably some good stuff in here um, that will support your learning journey in my custom package. So I keep that on my GitHub. Uh, and you're more than welcome to download it and just try it out. So thanks for watching today. If you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. I make videos about two to three times a week and I plan to do so for a while now. Um, and there's a few more Python videos to come. So I look forward to teaching you a bit more. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.